Five words or less to uh, describe the instigators. Uh, Ready? A. Ah, oh, are we doing it like We're that? We're doing the word game. Uh, okay. Um, Fun. Film. About. Two. Idiots. That's <laughs> five. That's eight, one film about two. <laughs> Uh, well, oh, oh, A, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we started with A. Words, yeah. Oh, A, great film about... Underdogs. Life. Underdogs. <laughs> <laughs>
available on you know a billion screens um, around the world. That's just such a bigger reach than 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 we would. I'm normally hearing get. the number, but I can't wrap. No, my you mind can't around. even because we think in terms of thousands of screens yeah. that a movie. Your movie might was come on a thousand on. screens. You felt like it was a really really big deal and a wide release, and you couldn't believe that people in San Francisco would get to see your movie and people. Yeah, so now to think about people in a hundred countries all at the same time can, if they want to, watch your movie. If they want to. If they want to. <laughs> <laughs>
actually on the last day of shooting of Roadhouse, I was shooting in the T-Mobile arena um, and a UFC fight, and I r ran into Ron Perlman backstage, and he said, how come you never cast me in anything? And I was like, stopped, and I looked at him, I said, you know, you're gonna regret saying that, because actually, I'm making instigators right after this, and I think you would be amazing as the corrupt mayor of Boston, and he was. In fact, he's like, I mean, Ron Perlman's like the key to, to sort of setting the tone of the whole movie, um, and um, his, his the, the lawyer to the corrupt mayor of Boston, you know, I thought we could have a lot of fun with that character, and Toby Jones came in and, and is so fantastic, and then um, the sort of, you know, because the film has a kind of bad news bears vibe to it of, you know, this, you know, thieves who can't get it right. Um, and, uh, you know, I kind of wanted not organized crime, but like disorganized crime and, and Michael Stuhlbarg and, I mean, yeah, Michael Stuhlbarg and, and uh, Alfred Molina, you know, are so fun together as, as the sort of crime bosses. Um, you know, like inept crime bosses, you know, like just, I could watch them forever, just doing those, those characters. And then Ving Rhames comes in to be kind of the heavy of the movie, like the, the one honest character in the whole movie. Yeah, you know, I mean, making movies, like people see like the red carpet and, it, it, you know, and especially if you look at a film like Instigators, it looks like we're just having fun making the movie because it's just such a fun movie. Um, I mean, the reality is making movies is really hard work. I mean, the last time I was in Boston, um, we were shooting and it's like, you know, you're up at five in the morning, you know, after only a few hours of sleep and it's like, and then because Matt and I sort of come from a place where like, like, Matt's a movie star because people like seeing his movies. He's not anointed a movie star, it's because they're good. And it takes a lot, of, it takes hard work to make a good movie and you gotta like, you gotta, we're not, we really appreciate the special opportunity we're given when Apple gives us the money to go make instigators and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna treat every second like it's precious. And that means we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and it means the days are very tough and you're very tough on yourself and they're very long hours. So who you make the movie with really matters. Um, and Matt and Casey and the Afflecks and Hong kind of, we became like a really close knit family. And I just, I found myself like looking forward to going to work in the morning. Even though I was, you know, felt the pressure of what needed to get done that day. And so my normal feeling on the way to the set is one of dread, just because I'm facing, you know, I'm facing the pressure of the day. In the case of instigators, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm, even though I know what we have to do today is almost impossible to pull off, and I'm holding myself to an impossible standard, I'm actually looking forward to going to work because I just can't wait to get on set with Matt and Casey and Hung. You know, I make movies for my audiences. You know, there's some filmmakers who maybe make them for themselves. Like, I really, you know, that's, that's the satisfaction for me is like sharing the film, sharing the story with, with, with an audience. And, and um, so, you know, what I love about a company like Apple is the ability to sort of put a film out for a huge audience around the world all at once you know, is obviously it's a little terrifying, um, but mostly it's, it's really exciting as a filmmaker to just know that it, it's, you know, the reach is insane. I mean, it's, it's truly compared to, you know, kind of films and theaters and how many, how many people get to see them versus, you know, when, when Apple puts something out, how, um, how quickly and widely it gets seen. And, and you know, my goal as a filmmaker because the flip side of, of streaming can be that like it gets seen and then it goes away and it sort of it doesn't have lasting power, you know. And, and I, my goal is to make movies that 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 stand the test of time, and it's been that way 
from the beginning. I mean, people are still watching Swingers. People who weren't alive when I made the film, which is terrifying to think, um, but are, are still watching Swingers. Like it's standing the test of time, and Born Identity obviously stands the test of time, and Mr. And Mrs. Smith stands the test of time, and Edge of Tomorrow stands the test of time, and it's like, you know, I want instigators to stand the test of time. I'm, I'm hoping in 10 years, just as many people are watching it as, as watch it when it hits this global audience.